Robert managed a weak red smile. At the least, they will say, this last thing, this I did right. You won't fail me. You'll rule now. You'll hate it worse than I did, but you'll do well. The king scrawled his signature blindly, leaving a smear of blood across the letter. And help my son, Ned. Make him be better than me. I am Eddard Stark, Lord of Winterfell, and Hand of the King. And I come before you to confess my treason in the sight of gods and men. I betrayed the faith of my king and the trust of my friend Robert. I swore to defend and protect his children. Yet before his blood was cold, I plotted to depose and murder his son and seize the throne for myself. Joffrey Baratheon is the one true heir to the Iron Throne and by the grace of all the gods, Lord of the Seven Kingdoms and protector of the realm. My mother bids me let Lord Eddard take the black, and Lady Sensa has begged mercy for her father. So long as I am your king, treason shall never go unpunished. Sir Ilian, bring me his head. Peace. There's your peace, Sir Aris. My sweet nephew broke it for good and all when he decided to ornament the Red Keep with Lord Eddard's head. You'll have an easier time drinking wine from that cup than you will convincing Rob Stark to make peace now. He's winning. Or hadn't you noticed? It would seem we have a new king. The eunuch has heard whispers from the south. Renly Baratheon wed Marjorie Tyrell at Highgarden this fortnight past, and now he has claimed the crown. My lords, why shouldn't we rule ourselves again? It was the dragons we married, and the dragons are all dead. There sits the only king. I mean to bow my knee to, my lords. The king in the north. The king of winter. It is as you warned him. They will not rise, Maester. Not for him. <laughs> they do not love him. Your true enemies are the Lannisters, my lord. If you and your brother were to make common cause against them... I will not treat with Renly. Not while he calls himself a king. Not Renly, then. Others might serve your needs as well. Eddard Stark's son has been proclaimed king in the north, with all the powers of Winterfell and River Run behind him. A green boy, and another false king. Must the rightful lord of the Seven Kingdoms beg for help from widow women and usurpers? You are the one true king. It would not be fitting to plead and bargain with them for what is rightfully yours by the grace of God. They love my charming young brother, as they once loved Robert, and as they have never loved me. Yes, but if Renly should die... The pup says nothing about a reward, and give him my sails and sword, and in return, he will give me a crown, a poor choice of words. What is meant is, what is meant is what is said. The boy will give me a crown, and what is given can be taken away. Mind your tongue, you're not in Winterfell now, and I am not Rob the boy that you should speak to me so. I am the Greyjoy, Lord Reaper of Pine, King of Salt and Rock, Son of the Sea Wind, and no man gives me a crown. I pay the iron price. I will take my crown, as you one redhead did 5,000 years ago. We've lost Riveron, and now her stupid brother is calling himself a king. All sorts of people are calling themselves kings these days. Henceforth, we are no part of their realm, but a free and independent kingdom as of old. 
Our demand shall include all the historic lands north of the Neck, and in addition, the lands watered by the River Trident and its vassal streams, bounded by the Golden Tooth to the west and the Mountains of the Moon to the east. The King in the North! Boom, Great John Umber. Stark! Stark! The King in the North! There are the terms. If she meets them, I'll give her peace. If not, I'll give her another whispering wood. I can't release the Kingslayer, not even if I wanted to. My lords would never abide it. Your lords made you their king, and can unmake me just as easy. This is absurd. My lord father has sent my brother to sit in his place in this council. He bids us accept Tyrion as the hand of the king. Please, uh, do let me be of service in whatever small way I can. Lord Tywin is at Harrenhal with his host, if you care to take it up with him. The maester tells me that we have 117 ravens on land. I mean to use them all. 117 ravens will carry 117 copies of my letter to every corner of the realm. From the arbor to the wall. Perhaps a hundred will win through against Storm and Hawk and Arrow. If so, a hundred maesters will read my word to as many lords in as many solars and bedchambers. The world will know of my claim. The seven have never brought me so much as a sparrow. It's time I've tried another orb, Gabbas. A red orb. Any force he summons will be larger than mine. You set us a battle we cannot out to win, Theon. This Turren Square will never fall. Theon smiled. It's not Turren Square I mean to take. I come as envoy for my son Rob Stark, the King in the North, to treat with Renly Baratheon, the King in the South. King Renly is the crowned and anointed lord of all the Seven Kingdoms, my lady. This is a fearsome lot of men, Sir Wendell Mandley observed, as they crossed the ancient stone span from which Bitterbridge took its name. That it is, Catelyn agreed. Near all the chivalry of the South had come to Renly's call, it seemed. The golden rose of High Garden was seen everywhere. Wherever she looked, she saw fires. They covered the earth like fallen stars, and like the stars, there was no end to them. Count them, if you like, my lady, Renly said quietly. You will still be counting when dawn breaks in the east. How many fires burn around River on tonight, I wonder? I mean to be king, my lady, and not of a broken kingdom. I cannot say it plainer than that. 300 years ago, a Stark king knelt to Aegon the dragon when he saw he could not hope to prevail. That was wisdom. Your son must be wise as well. Once he joins me, this war is good as done. You all know me. My father has done the ancient crown of salt and rock and declared himself king of the Iron Islands. He claims the north as well, by right of conquest. You are all his subjects. I will be as good a lord to you as Eddard Star ever was. If Rob Star can stave off the Lannisters, he may reign as King of the Triton hereafter. But House Greyjoy holds the North now. Using some vile sorcery, your brother fell upon Sir Stephen Lannister with an army of gods, not three days' ride from Lannisport. Thousands of good men were butchered as they stepped without the chance to lift sword. After the slaughter, the Northmen feasted on the flesh of the slain. You have nothing to say? I'd shoot you too, but if I do, Mother says they'd kill my Uncle Jamie. Instead, you'll just be punished. What is the meaning of this? I'm punishing her. For what crime? She did not fight her brother's battle. She has the blood of a wolf. And you have the wits of a goose. 
You can't talk to me that way. The king can do as he likes. Ares Targaryen did as he liked. Has your mother ever told you what happened to him? Nothing to say, your grace. Good. Learn to use your ears more and your mouth less, or your reign will be shorter than I am. Wanton brutality is no way to win your people's love, or your queen's. Fear is better than love, Mother says. She fears me. Yes, I see. I pity Stannis and Renly aren't twelve-year-old girls as well. Lord Renly. King Renly. The Iron Throne is mine by right. All those who deny that are my foes. The whole of the realm denies it, brother. No one wants you for their king. Lord Tywin sits at Harrenhal with 20,000 swords. The remnants of the Kingslayer's army have regrouped at the Golden Tooth. Another Lannister host gathers beneath the shadow of Castle Rock, and Cersei and her son hold King's Landing and your precious Iron Throne. You each name yourself King. Yet the kingdom bleeds, and no one lifts a sword to defend it but my son. Your son has won a few battles. I shall win the war. The Lannisters can wait my pleasure. If you have proposals to make, make them, Stannis said brusquely, or I will be gone. Very well, said Renly. I propose you dismount, bend your knee, and swear me your allegiance. That you shall never have. You said Robert, why not me? Robert was my elder brother. You are the younger. Younger, bolder, and far more comely. And a thief, and a usurper besides. The Targaryens called Robert usurper. He seemed to be able to bear the shame. So shall I. You may well have the better claim, Stannis, but I still have the larger army. If truth be told, I've never liked you, Stannis, but you are my own blood and I have no wish to slay you. So if it is Storm's End you want, take it as a brother's gift. As Robert once gave it to me, I give it to you. It's not yours to give. It's mine by rights. I'm not without mercy. Thundered he who was notoriously without mercy. Nor do I wish to sully Lightbringer with a brother's blood. For the sake of the mother who bore us both, I will give you this night to rethink your folly, Renly. Strike your banners and come to me before dawn, and I will grant you Storm's End and your old seat on the council, and even name you my heir until the son is born to me. Otherwise, I shall destroy you. All the chivalry of the South lies with me, and that is the least part of my power. My foot is coming behind. A hundred thousand swords and spears and pikes. And you will destroy me? With what, pray? That paltry rabble I see there, I do not care how seasoned a warrior you think you are, Stannis. That host of yours won't survive the first charge of my vanguard. We shall see, brother. Look to your own sins, Lord Renly. It would appear Renly was murdered most fearfully in the very midst of his army. His shirt was opened from ear to ear by a blade that passed through steel and bone as if they were soft cheese. Joff will be so disappointed he was saving such a nice spike for Renly's head. But whoever did the deed, we must assume that Stannis was behind it. The gain is clearly his. Winterfell is the heart of the land, but how am I doing it without a garrison? You might have thought of that before you took it. Oh, it was cleverly done, I'll grant you. If only you had the good sense to raise the castle and carry the two little princes back to fight as hostages, you might have won the war in a stroke. Your prize will be the doom of you. Do not imagine this is done, boy. Born one, the bastard son of some Florent or other. The Lord of Light protects King Stannis, now and always. 
or your swords and all your scheming shall not save you when his hour comes. Here are my terms. You have until evenfall to disperse. Those who swear fealty to Balon Greyjoy as their king and to myself as Prince of Winterfell will be confirmed in their rights and properties and suffer no harm. Those who defy us will be destroyed. Do not imagine that I need to wait for Rob to fight his way up the neck to deal with the likes of you. I have near 2,000 men with me. And if the tales be true, you have no more than 50. I gave you the chance to save your men and die with some small shred of honor, turn cloak. I should have known that was too much to ask of a child killer. Stannis? What of Stannis? He lost the battle at King's Landing. His fleet was burned. His army routed. A Lannister victory was ill tidings. But Catelyn could not share her brother's obvious dismay. She still had nightmares about the shadow she had seen slide across Renly's tent. I am the rightful king, and your son, no less a traitor than my brother. His day will come as well. Stannis stretched forth a hand, and his fingers closed around one of the leeches. Say the name. The usurper, he said. Joffrey Baratheon. When he tossed the leech into the fire, it curled up like an autumn leaf amidst the coals and burned. Stannis grasped the second. The usurper, Balon Greyjoy. He flipped it lightly onto the brazier and its flesh spit and cracked. The blood burst from it, hissing and smoking. The last was in the king's hand. The usurper, he said at last, Rob Stark. And he threw it on the flames.